This segment is brought to you by Moss Yoke Camouflage. It's not a passion, it's an obsession. We always say that we tell the wildest stories. Well, sometimes the wildest story is the story that never got told. Welcome everyone to the first installment of the Heartbreaker series. This story all got started one beautiful evening in early October. I was in one of my favorite trees over a biologic field, sitting there with new cameraman at the time, Joe Foster. And all of a sudden this giant buck, this giant Iowa buck appears, comes in, great encounter, and uh, he was three and a half, so I elected to pass. Joe, who was from Louisiana, this was one of the first big racked deer he had seen in Iowa. We turned the camera off and he just made over that deer. And I told him that night, I said, you know what, Joe? I said, in honor of you starting this year, I'm gonna call that deer Big Joe. And that's the name that stuck with one of the most incredible typicals I would ever know. Big Joe was one of those bucks that, after that in first encounter, got fairly elusive. That was the fall of 09, and then into the fall of 10, I had lots of trail pictures of him, but I didn't have a single encounter with that deer. Four and a half years old, and I mean a true Iowa giant, a buck that I thought for sure would go into the high 70s, low 80s. I just knew one thing. At that time, we'd been filming for some 20 plus years. I knew he had to be one of the greatest typicals I had ever known to exist. Then in the summer of 2011, things really got interesting. I had lots of pictures of Big Joe, and once again, that big typical frame showed up. Just this giant Iowa whitetail that I thought for sure would be 185 to 190. And he was five and a half years old, going into the bow season. I knew in my heart of hearts, if I had a shot at that deer, I was gonna try and take him because he was just absolutely a jaw dropper. He looked right at her and he didn't, he didn't decoy in. You can't ask for more than that. All alone. Now he's gonna go way downwind. I'm gonna have to look out the back of the blind. Man, I thought he was gonna come and come right down this edge. Boo. Nice to see a deer that size though. That thing is huge. He's awesome. What a typical. Going into the latter part of the season, I had a muzzleloader tag in my pocket. John Williams was coming up to film with me for a few days, and uh, we went to a farm probably about a mile away from Big Joe's normal home range. Well, by the time gun season rolled around, I was discussing it with Terry and discussing it with Joe Foster, and we said, wouldn't it be incredible if this five and a half year old made it to age six? and what would this typical look like at age six and a half? World class as far as I was concerned. So going into the gun season, I kind of made my mind up. I wasn't gonna shoot Big Joe if I had the opportunity. Well, Big John's up and he's looking at these big Iowa bucks we're seeing on a nightly basis and he's like, man, you gotta shoot one of these while I'm here. And I said, you know what, John, we're going in a hatch bottom, one of my favorite places. Tonight, if a big mature buck shows up, we're gonna have some fun. Maybe we'll pull the trigger. We go in, we set up, and uh, the, the night starts to wane, and all of a sudden, who shows up but Big Joe, well out of his home range. I never imagined he was gonna show up there. And I looked at him, and John looked at him, he goes, there's one you're gonna shoot. And I looked at him through the binoculars, and I looked at John, and I said, John, you're gonna kill me, but I'm letting him pass, buddy. And I'll never forget it. Before John even pressed record, he goes, you are wearing me out, son. Just like that. 
And uh, I felt bad for John, but it was something in my heart of hearts. I just wanted to see if Big Joe could make it to six and a half because once you get into late December, generally they're gonna make it. Uh, so I gave him the pass. Probably not the wisest of decisions I've ever made. And I think I even had some comments about that after he, he walked through in, in my uh, interview. Well, during the postseason, I would have broke my left arm to get a shot at that deer. Here we are during the gun season. And uh, kind of thought about it, talked it over with Terry, talked it over with Joe. Decided to, if we had a shot at him, not to take it because he's five and a half. He's one of the best typicals I've ever seen. And I'm really rolling the dice. I mean rolling it big time. That he's going to make it to age six and a half next year and see what he turns into. Probably looks stupid and sounds stupid, but chances are you won't see this unless I kill him next year. <laughs> we'll see. He's a beautiful deer, but we're not shooting him. John says I'm wearing him out. All right, was it a stupid decision? We would wait till the summer of 2012 to find that answer out. I had cameras in all of Big Joe's home range. I was looking for him and looking for him hard. I couldn't wait to see what he might look like and put together a plan to, to try and take this deer because now I had two or three years worth of photo history so I knew where I was gonna try and hunt him throughout that fall. I felt like I knew where he bedded, I felt like I knew where he was feeding for the most part and had a good plan to try and hunt that deer with a bow that fall. Well, the summer of 2012 comes and the pictures show up. I don't get many pictures of him, but he is an absolute mega giant. He's the type typical that everyone dreams of. Here he is, the same buck that I encountered at three and a half. Here he is at age six and a half. And to me, he looks like he's a 190, 200 class deer. Well, the summer of 2012 was one for the books. As most people will remember, we had an extreme drought. I mean, no rainfall for 45 plus days from late June all the way into uh, August. And the reports start showing up on social media. We start finding dead bucks. No doubt about it, EHD had hit. Now your worst fears come to realization because all of a sudden I start going from a shooter's list to a missing in action list. And unfortunately, Big Joe was on that list. I hadn't got pictures of him in quite a while. Going into the season, I wondered whether he was still alive or not. The season goes by, no pictures. Big Joe remains on that MIA list, missing in action. And then finally, after the season, I think it was probably a few months after the season, I learned that a neighbor had indeed found Big Joe dead next to his pond. There he was, I got one picture of him, the neighbor shared with me, this giant 195 plus typical deer, he might've been 200, I don't, I don't think they even, measured him but he is a mega giant based on the pictures and that one picture I have of him in the back of the truck. So there's the story of Big Joe looking back on that encounter in the fall of 2011. Uh, that's where the heartbreak starts. I've thought of that encounter many times. I've thought of John's whispering in my ear many times. You're wearing me out son. And looking back on that interview I said it might not be the best decision. Kind of uh, seems stupid to do this. Well. The answer to that question is, I was probably pretty stupid to pass him. However, there is a silver lining to this heartbreak story. Those sheds we were able to find, they ended up grossing 188. And those two sheds were part of the original dream sheds that we worked with through Catch a Dream and Whitetails Unlimited. We actually have a program with those two entities where we auction off our sheds at all the Whitetails Unlimited banquets, and then the money goes to help Whitetails Unlimited and Catch a Dream. That pair of sheds, brought in over $3,000 for those two organizations. So there's the reason probably down deep that he ended up passing Big Joe. Probably wasn't the best decision from a hunting perspective, but at the end of the day, those sheds sure made a lot of smiles on a lot of different faces. That's the first heartbreak story. We're gonna be bringing you many more through the years. We sure have a bunch of them. Hopefully you enjoy this new series from DOD TV. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by PSE Archery. Head on over to PSE and dial in your shooting style to get the best product for your specific needs.